Hey everybody, it's Marcus. I'm here with the February 2022 Tesla Solar and Powerwalls update. As always, if you like what you're seeing, please like the video and hit subscribe. I'm uh, going to try and do some videos this month on the Stormwatch feature and also on setting your reserves, so keep an eye out for those. Uh, just some housekeeping before we go into the data. I had two exciting things happen this month. Uh, first was, got my referral check. So you can actually self-refer yourself with Tesla uh, to get the solar panels. Uh, if you own a car, use your referral and you can get, I believe it's $300 now for panels, 500 for the roof. Uh, and then you'll also get $100 off your order. So take advantage of that if you have a car. If not, uh, use the link down below in the comments and you can use mine. Uh, second thing that happened is there was actually a server outage about a week ago with Tesla. So what that ended up doing is knocking the app out. Just showed connecting, didn't have any data. Lasted for about four or five hours before they fixed it. Uh, everything updated afterwards. Uh, I'll kind of show you some of the screens here. Um, but basically uh, it prompted like it wasn't connected to the internet. I tried resetting the router and modem in the house here. That didn't work. Uh, it prompted me to connect the power walls to Wi-Fi. That also didn't work, uh, but eventually the servers just came back up on their side and everything worked out. So here we go. Let's look at the data. I'll start off with the house usage here. We averaged in February 23.5 kilowatt hours per day. In January, that was 21.7 kilowatt hours per day. So just a little bit of an increase. Uh, you can see on the graph here, those higher points are days where we charge the car here. Usually we charge at work for free. Uh, the medium days are days where we did laundry and the electric dryer was running. Uh, what's important to note here is that those graph bars are all green and yellow, which means we did not use the grid at all this month. Next up, let's take a look at the production numbers. We produced a little over 1,100 kilowatt hours this month. We made about 790 kilowatt hours in January. Uh, in January, we averaged about 25.5 kilowatt hours. In February here, 39.6 kilowatt hours. Uh, we went from a peak of 33.3 kilowatt hours in January all the way up to 48.5 kilowatt hours in February. So about a 50% increase in the peak production, about 35% more in total production for the month. Next up are the Powerwall discharge figures. On average, you did 14.6 kilowatt hours of usage from sundown to sunup. This is basically when the solar isn't enough to cover our use. Uh, here you can see as long as you're keeping it below the total capacity of the power walls, for us that would be 43.5 kilowatt hours, you're not going to be using the grid at all. But what blew me away this month was what a difference a month makes in terms of production. In January, we net exported 48 kilowatt hours to the grid. In February, that was all the way up to 387 kilowatt hours. You can actually see we didn't use the grid at all this month. Those two null days are those days where we charge the car. Uh, we had enough with the solar and the power walls to last not using the grid. We just didn't have enough to send back extra. Uh, we averaged about 14 kilowatt hours sent back to the grid over the course of the month, our low being 26.4. Uh, that's pretty much production that's double what our house uses in a day, which is pretty impressive. One thing to note before I go is that the impact screen does seem to have some sort of bug. It's not populating the percentages for what came from solar versus power all versus the grid. Hopefully they'll get that fixed. I think that popped up after the recent app update. Uh, as always, I'm going to do these monthly, so keep on coming back. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you like what you're seeing, and thanks so much. Have a good one.